Tonight I want to talk to you about love in action. Can I do that? Yes. Why do you need to get Demetrius? Because I usually ask Donna for permission. Today I ask him for permission. Yeah. Isaac, can I talk about love in action tonight? <laughs> Thank you, sir. I knew you would. <laughs> I have three passages that I'd like you to open up. Will you print it out, uh, print it out uh, copy for you on the printer? The first passage is found in Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 12. 9 through 21, I apologize. Tonight I want to read the Word of God. I feel like we, we haven't read the Word of God enough. Anybody with me? Yeah. Are you full of the Word of God? We need more. We need more. So do I. How about you? Need more. You need more. I need more. Sure. This world, our country needs oh, dear more God. Amen. Far off to spirit, Lord. Romans 9, chapter 20, uh, Romans 12, verses 9 through 21. It's 12. Romans 12, verses 9, verses 9 through 21. I'm confusing myself. You don't have notes in front of me. So pray for me. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. <clears throat> Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope. Patient in affliction, faithful in prayer, share with the Lord's people who are in need, practice hospitality, bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse, rejoice with those who rejoice, mourn with those who mourn, live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, do not be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it is depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. That is Romans chapter 12. 12. If you could, in your Bible, turn to Hebrews chapter 12. Again, we know who wrote Romans, right? Who wrote Romans? Who? I really did? <laughs> I really wrote Romans. <laughs> Apostle Paul. Yeah, I think so. <clears throat> Hebrews was written by who? We don't know. We, we're not sure, but we believe it, it, it's Apostle Paul, and most theologians say it's Apostle Paul. It could be written by a woman, actually. It could be written by a woman. That's what I thought you said. Yes, that's exactly what I said. Yeah. However, because until the New Testament came about, women's voices would not be heard, right. it is unknown. Hebrews chapter 12, and Hebrews chapter 12 follows Hebrews chapter 11. Yes. Huh? <laughs> Hebrews chapter 11 is what? Right before 12, exactly. Faith chapter. <laughs> but if we go down to verses 14 through 17, let's read this together and see if we can combine it with Romans. Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God, and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble, 
and defile many. See that no one is sexually immoral or is godless like Esau, who for a single meal sold his inheritance rights to uh, as the oldest son. Afterward, as you know, when he wanted to inherit his blessing, he was rejected, even though he sought the blessing with tears. He could not change what he had done. I want to go to one more passage. Can I do that? You may. As we said, Romans is by, written by Paul. Let's go with that. Hebrews is written by a woman. And let's go to 1 Peter, chapter 3. And anyone who wants to get school wrote 1 Peter? Peter. Peter. <laughs> Peter. Love Peter. Peter, chapter 3, verses 8 through 18. Tell me when you're there. Thank you. Finally, 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 all of you be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing because to this you were called so that you may inherit the blessing for whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. They must turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against you, good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. For it is better if it is God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for, the, for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous to bring you to to, uh, to bring you to God he has put to death in the body but made alive in the spirit tonight I want to talk to you about love in action can I do that yes thank you love as we all know our country is in turmoil our country has no peace Many people, as you have seen on TV, say, no peace. Many people continue to bring up hurts. I don't know about you, but have you ever been profiled? Any of you? I've been profiled. I have white skin. Uh, for those of you who missed the meeting on Monday, you missed a good word, I think. Uh, there's people on here uh, that I don't see, YouTube and Zoom, so I'm not sure who's on here tonight. We have... About 14. About, we have about 14 people here tonight. Pretty good. About. I think, well, I, I start counting, but as long as my train of thought, I can continue counting. <laughs> I've been profiled. All of us have been profiled in one way or another. Whether we know it or not, we all have been profiled. I've been profiled by the police. I've been profiled by the churches. I've been profiled by my own kind. My, uh, people that look like me, people that don't look like me. I've been profiled. We've all been profiled. Tonight, I don't want to talk about profiling. I want to talk about love in action. 
When we talk about love, there are many words that signify love. There are many words that we can say as lovely words. The Bible speaks about a couple of different kinds of love. Love towards God, love towards your mankind, and love that a man and a woman have. There are different kinds of love. Today I want to talk to you about love to your mankind. I'm trying to look to everyone, not to single anybody out, except for my son Jeremy right there, <laughs> with making faces at me. I love you, 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 all of you over there, and everybody over there, and everybody online and on Zoom, I love you. Can you say I love you to somebody? I love you. I love you back. I know we're not supposed to talk to each other in church because of the social distancing, but I think if we continue to separate ourselves, if we continue to social distance, we, were, we will social distance ourselves from love. Amen. So the fact that I ask you to say I love you with your masks on, of course. For those online, we have, we're, we're supposed to have masks on in the building. I don't have a mask on because if I have a mask on, you'd never hear me. Or I'll be very, very muffled. But I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love y'all. How's that sound? Like that. There you go. <laughs> You don't have to be wearing it if you're not sitting anybody, anybody close to, uh, close to the six uh, feet. Right. But when we say, I love you, that brings emotion. Amen? And when we say, I love you, like we read in Peter, I'm sorry, in Hebrews, we, uh, verse, uh, Hebrews 12, verse 14, make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. When I say I love you, love doesn't have a will to hurt another. Amen? When I say I love you, that means I want the best for you. I don't want to hurt you. This is why it is important for us to speak about love in action. I'm going to be going through Romans chapter 12, and I'm going to be throwing in a few things that we read in Hebrews and in Peter. We read three different authors, and all three different authors have the same thing to say. Yep. What is it? Love. 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 Peace. Yep. As far as it is up to you, as far as it's up to you, as far as it's up to you and you and you and me and you guys on, online, as far as it's up to us, be at peace with each other. Well, if you go put on the screen, Romans uh, chapter 12, verse 9, let's read it together. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. I want to dissect this a little bit, and if you could help me out here, that'd be greatly appreciated. For those of you who are online, dissect it with yourself as I am speaking. Love must be sincere. What does it mean to be sincere? Honest. Honest. What do you say? Surreal. Surreal? Okay. Straightforward. Straightforward? Yeah, true. True? Genuine. Genuine? Yeah. Don't claim love unless it is true. Can you say that? If you say, I love you, but it means nothing, is it really love? No. And the answer is no. The next part says hate. Did the Bible just say hate? Hate that which is evil. Yes, the Bible says hate that which is evil. We cannot condone violence. We cannot condone evil. We cannot condone those things that are against the teachings of the Bible. Hate what is evil. The Bible is very clear on hate. The only thing that you hate, you don't hate another human being. You, you may hate their actions, but you love the human being regardless of how simple they are. 
while we were still sinners, Christ loved died. us. Died, died for us, us. loved us. Yep. Yep. We were still in sin. We were, we were to be hated, in, in other words. But Christ died for us while we were still in our sins. See, we want everything to be perfect. Anybody likes to be perfect? Sure. Listen, I want my house to look perfect. I want that our, uh, our bathroom, bathroom to look perfect. Well, it's pretty close. I like perfect things. I'm sure all of you like perfect things. Amen? <laughs> Therefore, the last part is cling to what is good. How can you cling to something? Think about it, right? Yeah. If, if if you fill your heart with love towards your human towards other humans, towards your brother or your sister, now we all know we're all brothers and sisters. Yes. I don't need to explain that, right? Amen. <laughs> if you got yourself, do you bleed red? Amen. Anybody bleed anything else but red? No, no. okay. <laughs> we're all brothers and sisters. Amen. We're all human kind, human race. There's only one race. God didn't create many races. We have all different skin colors, although I, I think I'm getting darker because the sun's out. I, you know, I compare myself with Jason there, and I think I'm we're pretty close. We're like brothers. Amen. I love it. Cling to what is good. It is good for you. It is good for your health. Yeah. Do you know that if you hate someone, your lifespan actually shortens? It is a scientifically proven fact. If you hate someone or something, your lifespan shortens. How many want to live a short life? Nope. No. No. I want to live a long and a prosperous life. Live long and prosper. Star Trek, come on. I was saving that for Greg, but he's not here tonight. Maybe he's on there. Greg, I was saving, I was saving that for you. We'll continue with verse 10. Let's read, let's read verse 10 to 13 together and um, let's talk about verse 10 to 13, to 13 real quick. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourself. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope. Patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need and practice hospitality. These three verses speak about the genuine love in action for the family of God, for other believers. This is, this is what he's talking about, other believers. And see, to us, it's very easy to love those that love us. Anybody doesn't love the, somebody who loves them? Anybody? You know, I cannot hate my wife because I love her and she loves me. If she loved me and I hated her, that would be a very difficult... Reverse psychology. That, that would be a very different, difficult place to live. Yeah. So verse 10 says, be devoted to one another in love. In love. See, love is an action. Love is not just a word. Love is action. Honor, honor one another above yourself. This goes against everything that we are taught in school. Do we realize uh, you're a school teacher, or retired now, but you're still a school teacher? And I don't miss it. You don't miss it. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping Amy, Amy would be here tonight, but you know, she's a she's a homeschool teacher, so that's a different kind of teacher. But Anne, when you were a teacher, what did you, uh, not you personally, but did the system teach them to be selfish, or did they teach them to be selfless? Selfish to the hills. Selfish to the hills. <laughs> See, we didn't practice this ahead of time. I just know. I bet to the school system. The school system is broken. Do we uh, go march against the school system? No. Anybody? No? Okay. I, I thought we were just going to go out there and riot against the school system.
school system. Pray like crazy for them. Pray for them. Yeah. The school system teaches us to be selfish to the hill. I never heard that expression, but I like it. But the Bible says, honor one another above yourself. Be selfless. Don't be selfish. Be selfless. Selfless. Give away yourself. You know how we sing, I give myself away to God so he can use us? If we would honor each other the same way we say we honor God. My uncle sent me a, a, a little meme today, two, three days ago. Uncle Vasily sent this to me. I'll send him this message so he knows that I'll talk, I'm talking about him here. <laughs> and and uh, in, in, the, in the meme, that meme you know, you, do I need to explain a meme? No? A meme is uh, a saying. Uh, there's a picture and there are words underneath that make fun of the picture. Oh, okay. You want to say that? Right? Yeah. So it's uh, uh, the two older men were, ta were talking amongst each other and, said, and one says, how do, you, how do your children respect you? And the man says, the way I respect God. He says, what do you mean? Somebody can get that probably a telemarketer, probably a useless phone call, but let's pick it up anyways. He says, they respect me the way I respect God. They, pre they, pretend, uh, uh, they pretend they can't hear me. They pretend I don't exist. Yet they call, they call on me when, uh, when it's time to pay the bill yeah. or when they're in trouble. Yeah. We talk to God when we're in trouble. We, I'm talking about, uh, we, not we as Christians, but we as individuals, as people, right. we only call on God when we need him. When we don't need God, who cares about God? We don't need him. And then we, when uh, there's trouble, when there's something going riding or whatever, we say, well, where's God? Well, you kept him out. Yeah. How do you expect God to be in control when you ask him out? Can you imagine coming into this building and not having a pastor? Yeah. And you say, well, where, where would a pastor go? And you ask him to leave early. Please don't kick me out just yet. I have some more words to say. But how do we expect a, that our leadership lead us if we don't respect our leadership? I'm not picking on anyone here because all of you are Christians. And I believe that most of the people that listen to me are Christians and have a moral understanding. Tonight, after I'm, I'm done with this sermon, I want to pray for our country. I want to pray for our president. I want to pray for our Congress people, our Senate, our House, yeah, our officers. Our officers. I want to pray for people. Is that okay? William. I want to pray for uh, for those that are, are in authority. I want to give them their authority again. How many are with me? Anybody with me? Yeah. Yes. yes. Why? Because it is important to honor all these offices even if we don't agree with somebody. Right. Honor one another above yourself. Verse 11. Is that okay? Never be lacking in zeal. Mm -hmm. How can we be lacking in zeal. Maybe stagnant. Be stagnant. Sure. Staying out of the word instead of staying out of the word. Yeah. Do we do we realize that when we started eleven weeks ago now, three months ago, third week in March, I believe that's the last first week that we started the quarantine. Maybe the fourth week. I don't remember. Whenever we started this third. quarantine, third week. Third. Third week in, in March, when we started this quarantine, do we realize that we just finished a week of fasting and praying, anybody? Yeah. All yep. of you were here. Yep. God spoke to me back in February to start a fast. And I said to God, God, we just did a fast in January. Who's going to show up in March for this fast? But God was 
God gave me a verse. Do you guys remember? Uh, right. You can. This is all on video, so all of you can go back and verify my words. It's not like I'm making this up now. But God prepared our church for such a time as this. Yep. And remember when we first started and how many people were on Zoom and how many people were on YouTube yep. and how hungry we were for the Word of God? Do we realize that on Monday we had seven people on Zoom? Yeah. Where, what happened to zeal? I don't know. Never be lacking in zeal. And please understand, I am not griping. I am not groaning. I'm going to continue doing what God tells me to do, whether anybody shows up or not. I'm going to continue right. with the Word of God. Amen. Never be lacking in zeal. Keep your spiritual fervor. Keep your spiritual passion. See, they, these two sentences belong together. The zeal of the Lord consumes me. Jesus said, the zeal of the Lord consumes me. I want more. How many want more? All of you said you need more God a few minutes ago. You need more, more of the Bible. I need more. Amen. Go ahead and say, need, Lord, I need more. Lord, I need more. Those of you online say, Lord, I need more. Serve yourself. Really? <laughs> oh, well, serving the Lord, I'm sorry. I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm so used to the school system. I'm selfish. Serve the Lord. <laughs> I'm going to continue. We're not going to stop there. Serve the Lord. Do I need to speak about serving God? Does God really need us to serve Him? Yes. No, God doesn't really need us. Oh. Sorry, Zoom. I see you fell. <laughs> Honey, you may need to, you may you may, you may have to hold this. Okay. <laughs> Today, technology doesn't want to work. This message is too good for the, our technology. Yeah, really. See, if you were here in person, for those that could, you could be, you could this 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 could have been a lot more fervor, right? A more a lot more passion here. Serve the Lord. Let's continue. Verse 12, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. prayer. How can you be joyful in hope? Olive, can I pick on you for just a second? Can I pick on you, Donna? Sure, both of us. How about you, Christy? Demetrius? Sure. Jason? Sure. Maria? Arelli? I want to point all of you guys out. How can you have joy in the Lord? Or joy joy in hope? I was glad when they said to me, Let us come to, Let the, us come the, to the house of the Lord. Amen. I'm not thinking on any of you. I'm sorry. If I, if, I, I, didn't, I didn't mean to, you know, try to put somebody on, on the spot there. I was glad when they said to me, Come, on the, up, come to the house of the Lord. Amen. When... We were allowed to come back. Yeah. I was so grateful. Yeah. I, have, I had hope to see a thousand people mm -hmm. come to the Lord. No. I was glad to see all of your faces. Amen. Talking to the camera, and for those of you who've been at my house and, sit and saw me for the past three months, just looking at the cameras just like this, and as I was moving, I kept on staring at, the, at, at this attraction there in front of me. Now I get to see Demetrius over there, Jason over there, Aureli over there, William up there, yeah. <coughs> Olive, Donna, Christy, yeah. Isaac in. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! I was glad when they said to me, come to the house of the Lord. I was so excited. I know some of you said that, Pastor, we're coming back. We're going to be together again. Yes. Yeah. we got to keep social distance just to keep the government happy and stop the spread of this virus. Although the rioters are not social distancing. Can somebody send the police on them, please? Because they're not social distancing. We'll pass. Never mind. Patient in affliction. Faithful in prayer. How many pray every day? How many receive answers to your prayers? Maybe not every day, but you receive answers. Amen? Amen. Amen. Although... How many say our, the Lord's Prayer every day? Yeah. Yeah. You know that the Lord's Prayer is, is answered? 
to you every single day? Yeah. yeah. Give us our daily bread? Yep. So you do receive every day. Forgive us our sins. Forgive us our sins? As we forgive others? Yep. That's a tough one for me. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Yep. And practice hospitality. For the past couple of months, I'm, I'm going to lift up my wife here for a second, so please forgive me for those of you uh, who don't know what, or maybe have not known what my wife has been helping with me with in the past three months mm -hmm. since we've been on quarantine. Every single Sunday when we have service, she has prepared a meal for everyone who comes. Yeah. For those of you who, were, who came, yeah. amen, was it good? Yeah. Yes, it was. Every single week, she faithfully prepared a meal for everyone who came. Thank you, honey. Yeah. Thank you. Maybe not everyone, thank you, but... Yeah. Right. Sorry, this is... I mean, remember the selfishness? No, it's That was good. my part of my selfishness. You did your Practice part, did my part. hospitality. Yeah. When people come... See, we, we as Americans, we don't really understand the word hospitality. Right? For the most part. Not, not, not we as Christians. Yeah. Not we as Christians, but I'm talking about we as Americans in general. We don't understand the word hospitality. We don't usually visit each other unless we make an appointment. You know, right? Yeah. See, in, in Europe, and uh, Dimitris can, tell, can, can verify this, in, in Europe, th th does anybody uh, make appointments? No. no. They just show up. <laughs> right? Especially. I'm still like. And where? Not even in Canada. Not even in Canada. You show up. Show up when you show up. My house is always open. Yeah. Aren't you glad you picked up a good, a decent pastor? Yeah. <laughs> like, good boy. Like, oh. there you go. <laughs> Practice hospitality. You know, Jason has invited us a number of times so over the past um, quarantine time. Through my wife's birthday party, and Aurelia and Jason. Yeah. You know, I don't know about it either. <laughs> <laughs> That's practicing hospitality. That's unlike. That's very unlike America, okay? Not picking on Americans, but this is where we live. Let's continue. Romans chapter 12, verses 14 to 16. We're continuing with Romans chapter 12. I read other passages just to bring together this idea of love in action. Just so we understand what that... Apostle Paul wasn't the only one that spoke about love in action. Amen? Verse 14 through 16, let's read together. Bless those who persecute you. That's tough. Yep. Bless and do not curse. That's tough. Rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, do not be, uh, but, but be willing to associate with people yeah. of low position and do not be conceited. This is genuine love in action to, hum uh, to us as, as humans. Bless. Good. Friendship and love is a, an expressible feeling of comfort. Always uh, an, an expressible feeling of comfort, never having to weigh thoughts nor measure words. I gotta chew on that for a while because that's way too much for me to understand it. All the ones, can you say that one more time? Yeah. Uh, fr friendship and love is an inexpressible feeling of comfort right. where you never have to weigh the thoughts of the other person or the other person's words. Okay, that's good. That's really, really good. The camera got it. I want to look at. I want to go back to this message and re-listen re to what you just said again and really chew on that. That's really good though. Bless. How do you bless God? Praise. Praise. Obedience. Your praise will always be on my lips. Would you say? Go ahead. I said obedience. Obedience. Yeah, Ooh. Right. Jason, you're going through a very difficult thing. That's but right. but you, you're absolutely right. That's what makes God the most happiest when we are obedient. Amen. Amen. How do you bless each other? How do you bless each other? By loving them. By loving them. Good question. Yes. 
what a, a thing that has been going over in my house for a while. What is love? Go ahead, honey. Tell them what love is. Because you don't know what it, 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 love is, or the way the world feels, that, the way I see the world sees love as a feeling. How you feel with that person at that given moment in time. That's how the world moves for love. But what is love? What does God say love is, honey? Yeah. Uh, always rejoices in the truth. Wait, first Corinthians chapter 15, verse 14. Always hopes, yeah. always trusts. Always perseveres. Perseveres, never fails. This is what love is. All the living expressions is what. First Corinthians God chapter loves. 13, verses 4 through 8. Love does not seek anything of its own. Exactly. Right. Can I read this to you? Yeah. Will, will you put it up? First uh, Corinthians chapter 13. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It's not selfish. It is not proud. It does not honor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be still. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. Love never fails. Thank you, Jesus. That is really, really good. Mm. He had love another cannot be fused, nothing good to love. See? Love cannot be fused, nothing good to love. Yes. Bless. Bless who, those who persecute you. Like I said, this is difficult for me. Maybe it's easy for you. When people look at me the wrong way, I tend to give them another stare back. A lovely stare. What can I say? <laughs> love those who persecute you. How can you love those who hate you? By the grace of God. By the grace of God. Yeah. Bless and do not curse. How can you love somebody when they hate you? How can you honor somebody who is acting in, unhonorably? How can you bless them? Mm -hmm. Only through God. Yep. Yep. This world needs who? Jesus. 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 Yep. Rejoice with those who rejoice. That's, you know what? Whenever I'm invited to a birthday party, I always go. <laughs> When it's a party, I go. When there's food, well, you know, I, I like food. When <laughs> rejoice with those who rejoice. How about mourn with those who mourn? You know, the Bible says it is better to go to a house of mourning, a house of mourning than a house of joy. joy? The Bible says this. I don't like mourning. I like morning, you know, like morning, yes. five, six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I don't like morning, M-O-U-R-N, I-N-G. I don't like to mourn. We live for happiness, you know, because I'm happy. No, we're not going to say it. <laughs> but we talk about happiness. We don't talk about, you like that, right? <laughs> I can have you come up into this, into the dance with me. No, come on. <laughs> I don't like mourning. I don't like crying. I don't like weeping. And if you like mourning, but yet the Bible calls us to mourn with those that mourn. Live in harmony, health, especially when, well, Donna was, uh, when, when Rihanna was singing, Donna was harmonizing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I sing way off key, so don't don't even, you know. Our world is singing off key right now. Mm -hmm. Do not be proud. It's difficult. I don't know if I want to be, uh, read this any further. <laughs> I'm done. Come on. No, let's continue. Do not be proud. Do not be conceited. Right. 
be willing to associate with people of low position. You know, it's okay to talk to somebody who is, le who is less than you. Ain't nobody less than anybody. Everybody's Can I hear you say that one more time? There ain't nobody less than anybody. We That's all right. Less than human. One. But the but Why even look at people like that, huh? But let me, so I'm let, it happens. Yes. But, yeah. Let me explain where the Bible is coming from because we need to understand the historical yeah, context yeah. of yeah. this passage. The poor were honored. Privileged. Yeah. Less Privileged. Fortunate. Less fortunate. Yeah. We, whether we like to or not, ever since Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve, ever since Adam and Eve sinned, we've been looking at somebody above and somebody below. So the historical context of this verse is they had slaves. Yeah. They had slaves. And some, the, the Bible is clear uh, in the Old Testament that Jewish people took other Jewish people as slaves. Even in the New Testament. In the New Testament as well. They, there were many, peop many people, in the, especially Apostle Paul, sent back a slave That's who right. converted to Christianity. Yeah. And in his letter he wrote, Treat this man as you would me. Because if you were a slave and you ran away, yeah. the rod would not be spared. Yeah. Can I say that? Yeah. In the church of God? Yeah. <laughs> so when we when when the Bible see Apostle Paul wrote real things. Apostle Paul didn't try to cover up things. He spoke in, in real language. Mm -hmm. And he said, be willing to associate with people of low position. Even if you, if you, if the Bible says, don't, don't think of yourself more than you are. The Bible's clear about that. There are, there are people who are very conceited. Yeah. Listen, we live in a world where we have anything from the KKK to uh, Black Panthers and whatever else. We have, we live in a broken world. That's what we do. We live in a broken world. I wouldn't come, associate myself with one or the other. I associate myself with Christ. Amen. Amen. You know, my identity is in Christ. Right. I am first a Christian, yep. second I'm an American. But I am first a Christian, everybody with me. Amen. Anybody with their country before God? Anybody? No. no. There are a lot of people that do. Mm. Their identity is in whatever except for Christ. Yep. And the Bible says, be willing to associate with people of other races, of other creeds, of other even religions. Do not be conceited. And what, 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 do, we, what do we think about when we say conceited? Be all things to all people? Kind of? No, no, the word conceited. Conceited. Oh. Not uh, self centered. Self centered. Don't be selfish. Yeah. Don't be selfish. Don't be the things that the school system has taught you. Stop. Your your identity needs to be needs to come from Christ. Our time is really flying today. I don't know why. But okay. Okay. I, I'm enjoying myself. Are you guys enjoying themselves? Yes. 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 Is this a good teaching? Yes. yes. Do we need this teaching today? Yes. yes. I hope you said yes online too. I paid all these people to say this thing. <laughs> <laughs> George Soros paying people, never mind. Yeah, right. Verse 17 through 21. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. Yep. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed them. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will keep burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is genuine love, or love in action towards the enemy. Jesus, when he came, he said, you have heard. It is written hate your enemy. To uh, Jews, when Jesus came, Romans were the enemy. 
You know that uh, the writing that we saw over the weekend? To a Hebrew, a Jewish person, that was any other weekday. The Romans would come and they tell you, they would drop something on the floor and say, pick it up. If you refuse to pick it up, they would make an example out of you. This is the, the culture that Jesus was born into. Yeah. He, but Jesus said, you know what Anna said, that hate your enemy, hate the Romans? I tell you, don't hate. Love your enemies. And here it says, do not repay anyone evil for evil. Right. Isn't that? If you repay somebody evil for evil, is that love? No. No. It, how can you say I love you? And we all said I love you earlier, didn't we? Yeah. Let's let's try with them. Let's say I love you all together. I love you. I love, I love you. you. I love you. I love you. I really love you. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> how can you say I love you and then repay evil with evil? Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. Can you please everyone? No. no. I was, I was the same mouth from what they think. Yeah. Yeah, all things and curses. What's the false side? Can be, brothers. Can be, yeah. yeah. Verse 18. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Isn't that what we read in a different passage? Yeah. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Make every effort to live with peace with everyone and to be holy. I won't read any more because our time is just leaving us. <laughs> and I still want to leave some time to pray. Can we pray today? Yes. yes. Anybody want to pray? Yes. I want to pray. I need to pray. Verse 19. Take revenge, my dear friends. Wh what? I didn't hear you. Take revenge. Take revenge, my dear friends. Is that what it says? <laughs> no, verse, verse 19, William. <laughs> do not take revenge. Oh, do not. I keep forgetting that do not. <laughs> I feel like all my jokes, you know how I was saying vengeance is fine? Yeah, that's the word. I feel like this world <laughs> took that literally. <laughs> I think so. Vengeance is fine. Like he said, take revenge. The Bible is against paying wrong with wrong. That's what's Doing happening. evil for evil. That's what's happening. Today. That's what's happening. It's evil for evil. Yeah. And there are a lot of evil people. Yeah. Possessed. You know, uh, I was watching something on Facebook. I, 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 I can't take any more Facebook, by the way. So if, 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 you don't, if, if you don't see me liking any more posts or no, answering any more posts, just know why, because I, 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 I just can't take it anymore. I, I saw this uh, uh, reporter, he took a video of, uh, um, I, won't say, I don't want to say it was killing, but uh, they were beating up a store owner. A store owner, they were beating up with two by fours. And then the reporter took the video camera, uh, the, the recording, and uh, was shown to the people who just did like, yeah, that's not us. Oh, yeah. That's not us. How about we just try to help the guy who's getting beat? Yeah, exactly. Instead of just watching him get beat and I taking know. it and showing it to the news. I, I think that would be... But uh, where, where, uh, where, where would they get the ratings? Yeah. Yeah, really. <laughs> people are doing this for the ratings. Yeah. Sick. People, pe pe sick. Exactly right. Sick. People are doing this for ratings. People are doing this. It's evil. So this reporter, this this was on Facebook, and if you, any one of you uh, can go on Facebook and, and uh, I don't know, a reporter showing evil doer, yeah. or, I don't know uh, the, the the thing. But there, these people who just beating up the this uh, store owner, they were they said no, that's not us. Yeah, right. Yeah, that was you. You're still holding the two by four. It's evil. It's not right. Verse 21 says, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. You know, and they're as bad as the person who 
kill that man. Mm -hmm. What they're doing is just as bad. I agree. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. They can't see it. I want to go back to verse 20. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed them. Mm -hmm. If you see wrong, make it right. Yeah. Feed him. If he's thirsty, give something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Yeah. And, you know, this is probably the most misunderstood piece of scripture here. When we think about a, a burning heap of coals on their head, do we think of punishment? Think about it. I take it as, I take it as, God's got it. Later. Don't worry about it. You're going to take care of it. God's got this later. Uh, Cult culturally speaking and historically speaking, back in those days, and, uh, William, bring me a basket, please. Quickly. I'm going to demonstrate this for you guys. Back in, back in the old, olden days, they used to carry everything on their head. Yep. I can balance it. I need more hair. Anyway, they would balance everything on their head, whether, whether it be water, whether it be burning holes. You would, you would put, the, 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 this speaks about if your enemy's hungry, feed them. If, you, if he's thirsty, give him something to drink. If he is cold, or if he doesn't have something to uh, cook his food in, give him some coals and help him. In doing so, you, you put the burning coals on his head and, and he'll take this. Your enemy we're talking about, this is helping. This is not punishment. But you take these, you know, they, they had um, things to carry water and uh, yeah, clay, pots. clay pots and they, and they carried everything on their head, right? We, we know that from history. And this is what it's talking about. This is not talking about punishment. This says, if your enemy needs something, as far as you're concerned, help them. Do not be evil like some of them are. But overcome evil with good. How can we overcome evil with good? Ideas. How can you overcome evil with good? Walking in the example of, of Verse 20, exactly. If they're hungry, feed them. If they're thirsty, give them water. If they need a shelter, help them. Build, build a house for them, you know. Right. If they're cold, because, you know, if you get cold, I mean, we're, we're about to hit the AC season. They got what they need a seat tonight. Maybe next couple of weeks. Yeah, right. How about you be just perfect? It won't be on in my house. <laughs> <laughs> Come over my house. We'll put it on for you. <laughs> he likes warm. If, if your enemy's cold, give him a blanket. Give him a blanket. <laughs> you do that for your loved ones, right? Yep. If your loved ones are hungry, would you feed them? Yes. Without question. If your loved ones are thirsty, would you give them some water? Yeah. If your loved ones are cold, would you give them a blanket or give them... Your jacket? Your, your jacket? Water, yeah. If your loved ones treat your enemies like you would your loved ones, mm -hmm. show them love of Christ. Yeah. This tonight is love in action. Amen. So, we're going to practice love in action tonight. We're going to pray for our country. We're going to pray for our president. We're going to pray for our leaders. We're going to pray for our representatives, our mayors. We're going to pray. Can we stand so we can pray? Anybody excited about prayer? I'm excited about prayer.